so we've now finished in the in the query editor we've done the power query editor we've done uh, all of the transformations that we need to do we've cleaned up our data we've made sure our data types are correct so we're ready to go we're ready to now move this data and physically transfer it into our power bi report into our power bi model okay we've, we've organized things well on the um, left hand side pane the queries pane and we know now that these queries here are customers locations products sales sales pe people it's probably a better word than that so sales people and dates you know we, we now know that this is going to be our core data model um, what i call our core data model okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go close and apply and you'll see here that it says close the query editor window and apply any pending changes. And that's interesting to note is that the query editor is not something that you just um, go to at the very beginning. It is obviously very crucial to do that, but you'll keep coming back here a lot. You'll be revising some of your transformations. You'll be bringing in new data. Uh, you'll be creating new tables out of your old um, existing raw data table. So there's, there's, there's lots of things that you might do eventually um, you know, with your reporting and analysis and Power BI, that makes you come back to the Power Query Editor. And you do exactly the same thing. You make the transformation, then you go close and apply. That's all um, embedded into the sort of code in the background. It will always work away and go through all of the different steps that you've um, put into your Query Editor every single time you go and refresh ultimately. Okay, so this is now applying those queries, That's the, the, those transformed um, tables of data now physically into your power bi model okay so usually you'll end up here right you'll you'll end up on on, on the sort of um you know the 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 fresh canvas you know where you can actually you know create your analysis right and you might think oh i'm just going to jump straight into it um but what you want to do is you first of all you know you want to just get familiar with what, what all of the different features within here first of all um and you know a good one to, to to note really early on is you know this is where the data gets committed to right so you're you just click on this data table and you can actually see the the physical data now um, placed into into particular tables inside of Power BI. But you know once you, once you're okay with this and you're 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 well versed in how you know all the different sections to Power BI, the very first place you always want to go before you do anything else is to the uh, to the relationships area okay and that is highlight highlighted by the well the modeling area this is um this particular icon here you want to click on that and that will bring you to this area where you can see your tables and um and you need to create relationships between them okay you need to model them up okay if you're coming from an excel background this is totally unfamiliar to you okay and i just want to really highlight the point here that this is an absolutely crucial part of developing anything in Power BI. You have to become familiar with some best practices here and you have to make sure that your relationships are set up in an optimized way. If they are not, you are making your life about 10 times harder inside of Power BI with the formulas that you have to write and understanding how calculations and analysis can be done. You have to get this area right, okay? And so you have to um just sort of embed into your mind some of these best practices that i'm going to run through um throughout um you know, throughout this 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 section which is not very long because the best practices are not that hard it's just about becoming familiar with them okay what i would generally do inside of here right as well is that power bi tries to guess the relationships that you have in your um in your data and so many times they are wrong okay and i really dislike that a lot um because you know it can really um confuse you it can really confuse new new users of the platform but obviously they've made a decision you know they want to try and speed up the um the understanding and the usage of of power bi so they've decided to make the relationships uh, automatic in some cases where they think they are a true relationship but in a lot of cases you know it, as i say it's it's not right so what i do is I usually always go around and delete these relationships, okay? And I recommend doing this if you're not comfortable, if you're not like 100% comfortable what is actually going on inside of here. Now you want to always model your data up as well because Power BI is optimized to work with the data model and the relationships that we're going to create, okay? 
you don't want to have like what you would generally would have in Excel, one huge flat file of information that's like hundreds of columns long. You want to have your um, you know, your core set of information, your transactional information in a very sort of long and thin table, and then you want all these supporting um, uh, lookup tables um, that have the filtering information in them, just like we have here. Okay, and now the other thing to note, sort of like the first thing that you want you want to do when you um, are working in here, and, and somehow sort of relates to the query editor as well, is you want to try and identify what each table actually is okay you want to try and um, group it as either a lookup table okay a lookup table like I was just mentioning before or what's called a fact table okay I've mentioned these a couple of times earlier but you want to try and understand which is which because there are two sort of main types of tables there is a lookup and a fact table fact table is like your sales table right that has all of your transactions in it. A lookup table is like all of your um, tables which are sort of filtering that table below, okay? And what I do, this is my sort of key point, um, you know, to round off this video, what I do is I like to put my lookup tables up the top here like this in a singular row, okay? And I like to put my fact table down below, okay? Now you might you know you you, you might have, dif uh, have read differing opinions on this okay because um and um you know this is this 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 sort of um feature within power bi is is you know has a huge background in database technologies etc and there is um you know there's things called sort of star schemas and snowflake schemas etc and um i think though that power bi has created a new dimension here okay and I go by this simple philosophy of keeping things as simple as possible, okay? And what you want to do, I feel, is to differentiate between those two tables and then try and layer them. So when you ultimately create relationships, you can visually, you know, you can visualize them so easily in your mind as going from sort of high to low, like a, I call it like a waterfall of filters. You want to, you want to understand that the filters are coming from up high here and they're going to filter any sort of data or calculations that we have down here. And our job is to build the correct relationships from here, sort of a one relationship to a, to the many side, which is down in the sales table. Okay. So that's sort of the key point there. And then what I want to do in the next video is just actually walk you through, you know, how you build relationships and things to think about with your relationships. But I just want to, you know, just make sure that you're fully aware of this data modeling area, how important it is to Power BI and um, some a simple best practice here in terms of how to differentiate or how to place these tables within um, within this this data modeling area because as you saw you know Power BI just sort of plants these tables anywhere and so it's 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 a really simple and easy decision to just try and differentiate between them so you don't have this sort of spaghetti of relationships ultimately you know to separate them in this way and have that waterfall of filters ultimately. Okay, so let's round this off and we'll jump to um, how to then build relationships and finalize what we need in this area.